Good morning, everyone. I'm here in Fallon, Nevada. I've got about 400 miles left on my 800 mile cross country down to my hometown of Kingman, Arizona. It's a nice cool morning here and I'm trying to get out of here as soon as I can because it's gonna be like gusting up to 24 knots by the time I get down Kingman, hopefully around noon or earlier. Most of the time, I wouldn't really care about 24 knots, but I have very little tailwheel experience and I know my limits. So I wanna get down there sooner than later and also, there's a lot smoother air the sooner I get out here in the morning. Well, I already filled up with fuel yesterday, right when I landed. I've already done a walk around yesterday, but I'm gonna do a quick one again this morning. I've already checked my oil last night when it was nice and warm. So I really don't have much left to do to get out of here. Like I said, I only got about 400 miles, actually a little bit less, I think, today. I'm gonna be making one fuel stop, and then on down to Kingman. And yes, it is very dirty. <laughs> it needs a wash badly. Well, we're going down to B, Nevada, about a two hour, close to 200 nautical mile flight down there. All right, let's get going. Clear. All right, oil pressure's coming in. My temperature, I already warmed this up a little bit earlier because I wanted to check some stuff. It has got just a little bit left to go. We gotta get our oil temperature up to 120 before we start taxiing. And I am no Rotax expert, but it's because the, basically the gearbox needs to have warm up oil in it. So we're here in Fallon, Nevada, okay? So just south of us, there's um, I think a Navy base or something like that, Class D airspace. And then we've got, you can see all these little blue things here, restricted, restricted, and all over here, restricted. So we've got a bunch of restricted airspace that we actually have to go around. I looked into it and I guess it's just too much hassle to try to get permission to go through that. So I'm just not even gonna waste my time. I I'm sure some of you guys know how to do it or maybe I'm completely wrong. Again, I've just started flying back in the United States from a long time not flying in the United States. So I'm still kind of like refreshing my memory on a lot of this stuff. So yeah, basically I've gotta go about 15 miles out of my way before I can get on course just so that I can stay outside of all those restricted areas. And then it's just a straight line of absolutely nothing across the desert down to a place in the middle of nowhere that does have fuel. Now I could probably make it all the way to Kingman without getting fuel, but I'm still learning this plane and I would feel more comfortable just getting more fuel. And that way I can also just check things over on the airplane more often just because I am getting kind of used to everything about it. I still have a lot to learn. Uh, Airport. Automated weather observation. One, four, five, three. Zulu weather. Wind two, eight, zero, at four. Visibility one, zero. Temperature one, one Celsius. Dew point seven. Altimeter two, niner, niner, six. Silent traffic. Kit Fox 24 Kilo Bravo will be departing. Runway zero, three, Fallon. Request any traffic. All right, approach end is clear. Departure end, it's clear. Got two degrees of flaps. Or two notches of flaps. All right, here we go. off the ground, let's get our flaps out. And on our two and a half hour probably, probably flight, I know we're gonna have some headwind today and some pretty decent crosswind there for a while as well, I think about 20 knots. But that's why I'm wanting to get out of here. It's 7.49, getting out a little bit later than I was hoping to, but it is what it is. All right, let's make our heading turn, left-hand turn. Gotta get used to this clearing turn stuff. New Guinea, there's no airplanes. There's so many airplanes here in the States, though. And 
go ahead and bring our power on back to 5200 RPM. All right, looking up here, looks like I got a little bit of a wind coming from this way. I can see myself already being blown. Again, this is a paper airplane and is very affected by wind. The one nice thing about this, with this little box right here, is it actually gives me live traffic on here, which is really handy to see where other, I've got another airplane coming this way, just a thousand foot over me. He's 1,400 feet over me now, I'm just looking for him. Oh, there he is right there. Man, this thing is super nice. All right, we finally got around all of the restricted area. Now I can pretty much just go straight direct to the Beauty, what is it, where am I going again? Beauty. It says they have fuel, but I don't see any towns around there. I don't see anything. We're just gonna pop over this mountain right here, and then I'm thinking it opens back up into a nice big valley. Well, the nice thing about today, I'm indicating here the 108, but I've got 117 knots of ground speed. Well, I keep talking, it's not knots, it's miles an hour in this airplane. So I've got 105-ish miles an hour and 117 miles an hour, so at least I got like a 10 to 12 knot tailwind along the way. We'll see if it does anything as far as the wind hitting these mountains or something. I have no idea how this airplane handles in turbulence, really. But like I was saying yesterday, once I get like my bigger tires on this and like a little bit stronger of a tailwheel, like places like this right here, I mean, it doesn't look like any of the shrubbery is really over 12 inches at most. And there's some really cool areas right here, like this whole area right here you could probably land in, the rocks. I mean, it looks like there's some nice kind of grassy areas that you could land in. That'd be really cool. Oh, the wind's whipping through here now. Up to 120 now. Yeah, I mean, that's all this area right here, that, that'd be pretty steep to land on though. Well, I still have to figure out all of my cameras. I would like to put another one facing forward up here. I'd like to put one over here as well, maybe on this bar right here. But I just didn't have all my mounts that I thought would work. I thought I had ones that would clip to or go to these, but um, evidently they don't fit. So I kind of had to quickly make shift this one up here. This one actually works. The other one that I could stick here, for some reason, I think the suction has gone bad on it. I'm not 100% sure. But hopefully in the future, I will have a little bit more cameras in here. Um, yep, there we go. Here's our little rolling wind from behind me. Let's go check out this wash down here. It's like about 10 knots of wind, but, but it's just kind of boring flying up at like 1,500 feet above the ground. Just making sure there aren't any like power lines, things like that. I saw some back there. I said there's a couple roads out here as well. Most little dirt roads, but I'm sure that I could land on one of those and not damage the plane too much. But I figured, you know what? This is where I got the plane, so I could go out here in the middle of nowhere and enjoy creation. The nice thing about this plane is because it is so unbelievably light, like 800 pounds or something like that, the climb rate on this thing can't be all the way up to like over a thousand feet per minute. With only myself in here and just a little bit back here, it climbs, climbs pretty well. Look at this, dirt road right here. If I need to land somewhere, I can land right here, take a pee break if I need to. I think I'm gonna wait until I get bigger tires on it and a little bit beefier tailwheel. I don't want to break something because this is not really... I bet it could probably land right here though, just fine. Perfect. Let me just get down there. I'm not gonna land, but let me just get down there and just take a look at this thing. Oh yeah, that's perfect. I think I'd like to work on my directional control first though. It's not very good. Yeah, definitely a lot more fun flying down low. You can see so much more. Before I left, I took a look at Windy App. I still actually am using that here in the United States, just for my winds. And, well, as you can see, we've got tailwinds coming from Fallon, and then right in this corridor right here, we've got about 10 to 15 knots coming out of the south. So right in this valley is I think is right where 
All of that is changing for me. I've been enjoying a nice 12 knot tailwind, smooth air this whole way. The second I got here, it started getting a little bumpy and then really bumpy. And I think that's right where the winds are just hitting each other. But once we get past here, it probably should just be a pretty nice, strong 15 knot crosswind. But once we get out of the converging air, I'll start speeding back up. Yeah, so look at here now. I don't know if you can see this or not, but I'm indicating maybe 103 or 4 miles an hour, and now my speed's only 92 miles an hour. We're not even two minutes ago. I was indicating probably around 108 miles an hour, but my speed was about 120 miles an hour, so a little bit different. But now that we're kind of, I think, into the consistent air now, yeah, it feels a lot smoother now. Let's just bring my power back up to 5,200 RPM. Yeah, I'm indicating maybe 105 miles an hour and about 93 miles an hour of actual ground speed. So yeah, we've got probably about an hour, 11 or 12 knot headwind. And this little thing right here says estimated time in route. It's an hour. It just seems to stick right at an hour. It doesn't ever seem to change, no matter what. Well, the winds have just continued to pick up more and more and more. I climbed up to 8,500 feet, well, just for one, just to kind of get over these mountains up here in front of me. But then realized I didn't really need to get up that high. But I've got 20 knots of headwind up here, so I'm slowly making my way back down. I think I'm just going to try to just go around the, maybe a little bit longer. I mean, with 20 knots of headwind, I mean, is it really longer? And to be honest, it's a little boring up here. There's not a lot to look at, and there's some really pretty valleys and stuff down here. But with the winds coming, I think, really directly this way, it's going to be hitting all these mountains and just kind of swirling and giving me a lot more downdrafts on this side. So I'm just going to slowly make my way down until I get out to the open valley, and then I'll kind of fly down the valley a little lower. But not worth the bumpiest ride right through these mountains. So I've got about seven more minutes to go. I'm just heading around these mountains right here just because I don't want to climb. You can see my old temperature is already at 190. It's just hot out. I'm low. I need to talk to maybe some other Kid Fox owners to see if maybe there's like a better oil cooler for hot temperatures like Arizona and the Southwest. But I figured I'm just going to go ahead and bring open the chart with you guys. Let's see here. I'm still learning how to use this thing. I haven't ever used Garmin Pilot until this week, but... We've got runways 1, 6, and 3, 4. So because I'm running into a headwind right now, about a 15 knot headwind, I'm assuming that the winds are coming out of 1, 6 area. So we'll be flying overhead and then joining in for a left downwind for runway 1, 6. That's the plan for now. There's no way I can get winds out here, unfortunately. This has no service, and when I picked it up in here, it also just didn't give me any, any winds or anything like that. PD traffic, experimental 24 Kilo Bravo, Niner Miles to the west, 5,000, and bound for landing, PD. So there should be fuel here. Don't see any NOTAMs, anything like that, so I'm assuming that there is fuel. We're going to fuel up and then head on to Kingman, which is probably with the headwinds today, it's going to be probably at least another two and a half hours. I was really hoping it'd be like a two hour flight, but it's just taken a lot longer than. Then I was kind of hoping for. I think it's just right over top of this mountain right here. Because it was at 3,100 feet. Pattern altitude, 4,100 feet. Or let's say 4,200 feet. Well, there's really not much to do. <laughs> Pre-landing pre checklist in this airplane. We've got our fuel on, our fuel pump on. Make sure both of our tanks are on. So yesterday, if you watched that video, I made a diversion over to Lake County airport because it wasn't the fuel wasn't burning properly and I thought okay maybe you know because I had my fuel cap was starting to or the seal was starting to deteriorate I thought well maybe one of the things is plugged so I didn't want to just shut it off because there really wasn't any good landings out there to, to give it a go so I stopped over there got fuel but then on my the next flight which I didn't actually film anything from I started playing around with just shutting off the fuel and just evening the fuel out that way and I've had no problem since then I'm able to keep the tanks a lot um, or even that way, so. PD traffic, experimental 24 kilo Bravo, five miles to the west. We'll be tracking for an overhead joined left downwind runway 16, PD. Okay, looking like the wind is definitely coming out of that direction. 
I can just see the wind sock. Not very well yet, so we'll fly right overhead midfield. Get on up to pattern altitude though. 80 traffic, 24 kilo Bravo, flying overhead to join a left downwind runway 16 speedy. Really not that bad, not nearly as much wind as I thought. It looks like maybe like, I don't know, six knots maybe? It looks like it's just about exactly down directly the runway, so well, that's good for me. PD traffic, 24 kilo Bravo, left downwind, 16 PD. Go ahead and go idle. We're, we're already within the green arc, so let's go two notches of flaps and start trimming out for 65 knots. There's our 65 knots. Our power up to right around 2500 RPM. And let's go ahead and start making our turn for base. PD traffic, 24 kilo Bravo, base, 16. And we'll go full flaps now. You know what? I think I might even just land in this dirt patch off to the side. Because there's a little bit more forgiving on dirt. That's what I'm going to do. Looks like it's cleared out really nice. Not too bad.